Well, uh, Kim and I were, were back down in Houston Tuesday, and we had our initial couple of appointments on Tuesday, and uh, we had contacted the bishop. Y'all don't tell anybody this, okay? This is just just between us chickens, okay? <laughs> I'm going to have to burn this video. <laughs> so we, uh, they offered to let us stay at their house again, the bishop and his wife, Mary Lou. I mean, that was real. They were gone. Okay, so they were out of town and been out of town for I don't know how long, a week or something. So anyway, uh, we accessed their house and go in and towed our stuff upstairs. All the bedrooms are upstairs, okay? Really nice house, as you might imagine. Really nice. And uh, we're like, dang, it's a little warm up here. And uh, the thermostat was on about 80 degrees. And so we turn it down to 70. Kim turns it down to 72. We're like, well, we just had it turned up, you know, while they, they were going to be gone. So uh, we put her around, you know, for an hour or two. And uh, the temperature upstairs goes up a degree. It gets to 84. Air conditioning. <laughs> yeah, guess what? So the Freon undoubtedly had gone out of their AC and <laughs> the upstairs AC. So, I mean, long story short, here's the good thing we get to stay at the bishop's house, right? I mean, who gets that opportunity? What a blessing. The bad news is, I slept on the floor downstairs that night. Kim slept on the couch because it was just too hot to be able to stand it upstairs. You know, sorry about that. Sorry, Bishop. But, uh, you know, and they were real gracious about it. They tried to tell us, turn all the vents off everywhere else except in our own life. But that ain't be good. It's blowing hot air, you know. <laughs> so, it's, so we, it was cool downstairs and all, and uh, so so uh, doesn't that sound like life? <laughs> yeah. That to me, that now, you know, maybe I'm being a little uh, melancholy or whatever, but you know, seems like a lot of times when good things happen, something comes along to kind of offset it a little bit and make it be like, well, it wasn't quite what. We had hoped it was going to be. So uh, I don't know about y'all, but sometimes when I'm eating with my silver spoon, I think it's a slotted spoon. You know, it's, <laughs> everything's just drib eating gravy, and it's just dribbling out the bottom end. I don't know if y'all ever done that. So, so uh, anyway, uh, but it's it's easy it's easy for us to forget the blessings we've been given to. Amen. Right. So, um, this scripture passage starts off by saying we've been made right with God by faith in His Son, right? We've been right, made right in God's sight by faith in His Son. Um, now, I don't know about y'all, but uh, I tried to live a good part, a chunk of my life on my terms in a way that I thought I ought to be living it, prayed for God's blessings on it, that I could continue to live my life the way I wanted to, and I did the, my dead little best to justify to anybody that, that, that uh, would stand still long enough the way that I felt about things. <clears throat> Y'all familiar with anything? Anybody like that? I mean, I thought, you know, I had it figured out. I had a plan. I had a way forward for me. And, 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 and I had surrounded myself with folk, like-minded folks that kind of propped up that that theology, I guess, for lack of a better term. Uh, uh, now that, was that, was that right? I think to me, there, there's an old term called throwed off. It was throwed off. You know what I'm saying? It's throwed off. When 
we start thinking like that. Here's what has truly happened. God sent his son into this world to pay the price that we might be made right, not in our own sight. The scripture here says, made right in God's sight. And how do you get made right in God's sight? You got to let go of all that garbage that you're holding on to that you think is your sacred cow. Whatever it is, I don't care what it is, you can name it. A, there's a thousand names for it. You got to let go of it, baby. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. We're, we're not made right in our side, in Orico's side. We're made right in God's side because we have to give it all over to Him. Amen. I mean, we got to let go and let God. I mean, you know what? I mean, I hope I'm... Because <laughs> He goes on to say it's not a right but a privilege. Y'all familiar with that, the difference between a right and a privilege, aren't you? Yeah. It's a privilege to be called a follower of Jesus Christ. And, and the way that we do that is by letting go and not trying to run things the way we want to run. Oh, I can do that. I can do that as well as anybody else. I know how to do that. But that's not God's plan. <laughs> we got to let go and let him run, and we've got to kind of watch for the way he wants us to go. It's called being spirit-led. Y'all have heard that, right? Being spirit-led, you let God lead you in the direction he wants you to go. Not the way you want to go. Honey, I'm telling y'all, I wanted to stay in the timber business. I didn't want to be standing up here 20 years ago. I fought it. I did not want it. I wanted to be the manager of the procurement for the Camden Corrigan Complex down there. I wanted to be, that's what I wanted. I wanted to be that all my life. I wanted to be that. I wanted to be that kind of person. And God kept blocking it, and he kept throwing kept trying to divert me and show me he had something else in mind. Who? Finally, you know, after hitting them brick walls a few times, I finally said, well, you know, maybe I ought to start paying some attention to this. Um, the other thing is, we're made right by the way we act. Is that right? Are we made right by how much money we make, or we made right by, I don't know, who our mom and daddy is, because we work at a public service job, does that make us right in God's sight? No. We're made right in God's sight by faith in his son, Jesus Christ. Nothing else. Now, I'm going to clarify this just a minute. True faith in Jesus isn't a one-time profession of faith. I'm sorry. That's where it begins. That's the beginning point. Amen. It's a life lived by faith. It's a following after Jesus with every breath you take. I mean, that's, that's what he's wanting. He's wanting a life that is laid down on the altar. Read, read Romans 12, 1 and 2. He wants us to give our bodies as a sacrifice, give ourselves over to him, and let him lead us. That's what he's wanting. He's not just wanting some intellectual assent. Oh, yeah, Jesus is the, he's the Messiah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we're going to go make a million dollars our way, and we're going to run roughshod over anybody that gets in our way, and we're going to steal from the poor and all that. But, oh, yeah, but I made that profession of faith way back. No. It's a life lived by faith. That's what he's wanting. Give it over to him all the way. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'll be 
beat that horse to death. And we, we find peace when we do that in knowing, that, knowing God and fully trusting in Him with every step we take. Have I, I'm kind of, okay, all right, all right, all right. So, the right way, um, which is the following, the following by faith, okay? It, it, this is how it all works out. And, and Paul talks about, you know, we go through trials and temptations, we go through difficulties, and it helps build us up in the faith, right? It's by walking the walk through fiery trials, through difficulties, through, through, through horrible losses, through all kinds of difficulties. And, and you know what? Y'all know anything about all that? Does anybody know anything about all that stuff? Is that, a, is that when we just throw up and quit? Or throw down and quit? When, when something bad happens, we just say, Ooh, ah, you know, I thought God was going to protect me from all that. Well, I don't know which Bible you're reading, <laughs> but that ain't the one I'm reading. Jesus said there's going to be trials and tribulations, but you know what? Guess what? I have overcome the world. You overcome it by faith. Yes, you're going to have to go through some fiery trials. I'm sorry. I mean, it's coming. Maybe you're not in one right now, and I, I give thanks to God if you're not, but there's one going to come along sooner or later, and how are you going to weather that storm? Are you going to worry and fret and, 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 you know, just work yourself into frenzy, have a nervous breakdown, uh, have to be put in an institution because you just can't have it? Well, I, I've been, <laughs> I thought I was going to have to be institutionalized a few times. Woo. Uh. Now, I'm going to say this, too. If you've got to have some professional help every now and then, <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with that, baby. I have had it. When, I, when Judy passed away, I went every week to a counselor for like six months, and I had another friend of mine who met me between and between for lunches and dinners, and it took that to help me get, oh, get through that time. I ain't gonna lie to you. It's okay. We need, that's what they're there for. You know, God uses them too. Don't deny them. You know, don't deny God's use of, of someone else. You're denying them a blessing. If you want to think you can walk it out on your own. Sometimes you can't do it. Uh, and I'm thankful that they have helped me at times. And I'll probably need them again. And I will be, I, I, I'm not ashamed to pick up the phone and call one. I am not ashamed to do that. Do I know everything? No. <laughs> I certainly do not. So um, the right way is to trust God in whatever we're going through. I don't care what it is, to trust Him and to know that somehow, however how bad it is, something good is going to come out of it sooner or later. Uh, he's going to give us the victory, even if, even if it's not what we thought it was going to be, even if it's not the vision we had. If that vision gets, you know, just blot it out, and it, it can't be anymore. Guess what? God can give us another one, and He can He can deliver us, y'all. He is the great deliverer. What did He do to the Hebrew people that were enslaved in Egypt? He delivered them miraculously. He could do the same thing for you. Um, just briefly. When my first wife betrayed me, <laughs> all right, and threw me out of the house and, and, and was not very nice to me and divorced me, I was mad. Okay, I ain't going to lie to you. I was mad as a wet hen. <clears throat> and it was hard for me to see the way forward. 
All right? I mean, it was hard. I mean, there for a minute, it was all blowed up. I mean, it was like, whoo. Somebody throw a stick of dynamite at it, and it, it was just gone. I didn't know which way to go. But, it, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't a, a stellar uh, saint or anything like that, but, but you know what? I blundered forward with the faith I had and trusted in God. And, I was kept, and, and my old preacher said, he said, Rick, don't, don't do what a lot of people do. You come to church. You don't give up on God. You keep coming to church. It's going to be hard that first Sunday, but you come back. And you know what? That's what I did. And I came back the second Sunday and the third. And you know what? There was a young lady there named Judy that was going to that same church. I didn't know at the time. God made a new way. <laughs> All right? And if I, had, if I had just said, no, I ain't going to fool with that. I'm going with my plan. Well, you know what? Caleb and Lucy wouldn't be here. And, and Bobby and Rachel, I wouldn't even know them, right? And their kids. And then Judy dies, right? I mean, well, I could have thrown down and quit then, you know, and just said, you know what, I give up. I am tired of this, man. Well, I wouldn't have Kim and Matthew, and, and, and Caleb and Lucy wouldn't have Matthew for a brother. They wouldn't have a mom. You got to, people, wake up and smell the coffee. God is, is, is helping us to get our legs back up under us when things come along. And, and it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Or, or will things ever be the same? No, they won't ever be the same again. But you just got to learn how to trust God. Somebody asked me on, on Facebook, uh, uh, one of my old high school mates, uh, when I, we were talking about going to Methodist Hospital in the beginning, we were saying, we're, you know, we're good, we, we had an appointment or two down there. And she's like, why didn't you go to MD Anderson? Well, that's a valid point, valid question, <laughs> right? I mean, really. I mean, that's the place to go, right? I mean, if you got cancer, Go to MD Anderson. Well, I, you know, I said, look, only thing I know to tell you is I'm trying to follow God. We're trying to follow God's plan, and the doors have opened for us to go to Methodist. So we're going to Methodist, all right? If the doors had opened to MD Anderson, we'd have gone to MD Anderson. I, I mean, I have no doubt. But in the end... Kim ended up with the chief thoracic surgeon at Methodist Hospital who did robotic surgery on her, quickly moved the surgery date up two weeks to accommodate her situation and got that mess out of there. If we'd gone to MD Anderson, we might still be waiting. I don't know. I can't say. Nothing against them at all. But for us, we're trying to follow God's plan, okay? And, and many of y'all probably know that there were some kind of miraculous things that happened along that way to, to just point us in a direction. We're trying to follow God. Maybe I don't do it the best, right? I mean, I stumble and mess up. Um, all right, so, so the right, y'all get it, right? I mean... Do your best to follow the good Lord. Uh, he'll lead you. I promise you he will. Uh, and the right, he said, Paul says, at just the right time. At just the right time, God sent his son into this world to pay the price for mine and your sin, to go to that old cross. I mean, they wanted to kill him before then, right? I mean, they were trying to kill him trying to find a way to kill him long before he was actually crucified. But at just the right time, it had to happen at Passover. Right? I mean, it had to happen then. 
Because this is the new covenant, right? The new covenant. He, he is the lamb, the, the Passover lamb that was slain. If you recall the old story from, from uh, Exodus where they, they put the blood of the lamb on the top and the sides of their door. That's the cross, people. That was Jesus. It had to happen at Passover to be the new way. So that Jesus would be our Passover lamb to, to guard us, to watch over us, to keep the angel of death away from us, that we might be live forever. Does that, does that ring a bell? That we might be made right with God, that we might live the right way, which is following him. And I can't tell you how you need to... What you need to do to follow him? I don't know. I mean, everybody's path is unique. But just follow him. And he will, he will lead you. And uh, know that, that there's a right time for everything. And it's going to all work out. And it's going to be okay. It will be okay. And, and God's going to take care of you. You just keep walking by faith. Uh, well, I'm just going to quit. Uh, there's an old boy, I don't know if y'all may have seen this on the news, named Patrick Hale, lives in Christiana, Tennessee. He was there at home, out in the country with his little girl, his little three-year-old girl. It was it day before yesterday? And one of his neighbors called and said, those two inmates from Georgia that broke out and killed those two guards are, are in the neighborhood. They just evaded the law out on the interstate. They ditched their car, the vehicle they had stolen, and they're running this way. Be, be watching. So he loaded every gun in the house. And he said, he, by that time, he looked out the window and saw them coming over the, the barbed wire fence 300 yards away. And he's like, well... What am I going to do? He said, I can get in the, lock myself in a, my daughter in a room, or we can try to get out of here. So he ends up getting his little girl in, in the car and, and, you know, starts backing down the driveway. And he said as he was doing that, those guys were pretty close by then, and they had taken their shirts off and were waving their shirts trying to get him to, to stop. And he's like, what are they doing? But he, the other thing, I'm sorry, I, after he loaded his guns, he said he started praying. He said he started praying. He said, I prayed like I'd never prayed before, you know. And he, then he got out there, and, and those guys, and he said, they, they, he drove a car that kind of looked like a police cruiser. So he said they might have thought he was a cop. And so he's backing out of the driveway, and here come those guys, I guess from the backside of the house. And they lay down on the cement on the driveway and give up. They surrendered to him. And he said, I didn't pull a gun on them. I didn't do anything. He said, they just, they just surrendered right there on my driveway to me. And he said, if, if that doesn't make you believe in Jesus Christ, he said, I don't know what we Amen. Because he said, I didn't go after them with a gun. I didn't hold a gun on them or anything. He said, matter of fact, my pickup was in the driveway with a full tank of gas and a loaded shotgun in the front seat. And they laid down on the driveway and gave up. He said, within three minutes, law enforcement was there and had them. Trust God, people. I mean, I don't know how better to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> He's the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, trust him. He's, he's the one who's made us right. He, we're helpless in and of ourselves. Believe it or not, you may think you've got, got it all together. Sorry, that's what, that's what the church at Laodicea said. And this is what Jesus said to them. If you say I'm rich, I have everything I want, I don't need a thing, and you don't realize that you're wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. So I advise you to buy gold for me, gold that has been purified by fire. Then you'll be rich. Buy from the Lord. He 
needs your help. Amen. Amen. If you're here today and, and you don't know Jesus, if you don't know, if you haven't given your life totally over to the Him and, and trusted in Him, you know, you can do that right now. You can. You, you don't need me to do it. You can do it where you're sitting at, or you can come forward and do it at the prayer altar. I'll be glad to help you if, if I can. But uh, it's between you and the good Lord. So we're going to sing our closing hymn here. Which